Well, hey, thrill seekers, and welcome back to the campervan series. So we're on episode three now, you've seen quite a bit. We've gone all the way through the early stages of the van build. It's all looking great. Um, we've got the carpet in, we've got all the panelling and sides in, the windows went in really well, all the trim went in, the skylight went in, so it's been really, really good. I'm really pleased on how it's went and uh, I hope you guys have found this series, you know, really good. We're going to conclude now with fitting of the kitchen um, and, you know, the tidying up bits, putting the fronts on the cupboards, the overhead lockers for the kitchen, the sofa, the Truma heater, which is a Truma 4E that I had fitted. Uh, so, yeah, um, as the pictures roll on, you'll see actually that this is how we left it. <coughs> But we actually had already fit the size up on the tops and put the fronts on uh, with a couple of the other pictures. But this is basically what I did is I put a, uh, a um, separator in between on the top lockers. And um, yeah, just to make sure that I was going to... I was actually going to do this out of furniture board, but I didn't want to make these out of furniture board until I made sure I had enough panels of furniture board to do the whole of the van. You need a lot of panels. <laughs> So, um, well, five. I did five panels in total of the uh, furniture board. Oh, I mounted the Truma. It's a Truma 4E. Uh, so she runs off electric and she runs off gas and 12 volt. Uh, it's really, really, really powerful. Really good bit of kit. Digital, so it's nice. Um, I've mounted this underneath the sofa. Had to drill holes through the floor for the outlets, um, for the overflow um, pressure release in case on the... Um, uh, hot water side had to pipe it all through but i'd already run the um, water cables or not water cables the water pipes i'd already run them through underneath through the bathroom so they were just waiting to be picked up we can see the cables there are just sort of lined up now really and just rolled up that's ready to uh, have the um, 240 socket put on and the electrics for the fitting of the front of that um, so yeah the vents aren't in obviously um, we have to make some areas for the vents to go in but generally that's it I marked out where I thought I'd like the sofa and then also I got some um, uh, flooring and I sort of laid that down to sort of make sure she was going to be square so the sides of the um, wood flooring and a square against the end of what is going to be the sofa arm if you like, um, the side of the sofa. Basically just then went about making two frames front and back, mounted the back one to the van and she sits on the floor, uh, braced it properly um, so all the bearing weight was correct um, and then yeah like I say got into fitting the um, cold water and the hot water there's a little you know you have to um, put in I did these with John Guest fittings because they're just really simple as long as you've got a nice sharp cutter for your pipe uh, which I would really recommend um, and make sure your ends are really good so when you um, on the hot water side you have to put like a cap in the end of the red pipe and then you can mount it up into the joint they are releasable so they can come back out again um, but yeah generally they're in there for good and they do seal well as long as you've got a good cut so I've got the side on for the sofa on that one I've got some of the um, Bentley stitch leather along the back and that sort of tidies that up now and really the the frame is in you know it looks quite hidden in there the tubes are in uh the outlet is there for the truma and the air ducted in for the bathroom one into the living and one behind the driver's seat a uh, bit of an awkward picture on the side here but this is actually the um john guest fittings that are going on to the back of the shower unit so uh, for the shower rail in the in the bathroom um again i wanted to make sure before i boxed all this in um i wanted to just make sure that there was going to be no leaks because once i boxed it in you can get your hand into it but to, unless you take the panel off it'd be a nightmare to get to it to make any changes so i just checked the pressures and stuff before i actually boxed this side in Again, there's the Truma, um, hasn't got the rear panel on. What I will tell you about these Trumas are though, um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get a Truma 2E or a 4E. Now, it's a difference in power with regards to how hot um, that, you know, that, that it can get, I guess. 
the 4E gets very hot. And I think if you've got lots of long tubing, a 4E is perfect. If you haven't got much tubing, then you don't really need a 4E. I'd recommend a, a Truma 2E. They chuck out so much heat. Lockers overhead of the bath, of the um, kitchen's now going in and the socket is up there ready for 240. That would be either 240 mains pickup or that would be um, through the inverter. Cables are through on the socket on the wall as well. Uh, so that's all through. Overhead lockers, like I say, side is then on. And then once I'd done that, I got on to designing a feature that I was convinced that I needed, which was I wanted a rear opening tailgate. So rather than having it sealed up like my last one was, that you couldn't, when you opened the back doors of the van, you couldn't get nothing in through the back of the van. So if you ever wanted to lay anything long in there, you've either got to come through the side door or not at all. So I thought if I could have some sort of door, I was going to put it on some hydraulic rams, but then I decided no. So I started making some templates and stuff up to try and see if I could get it to work. Um, and the main the main thing really was is I kind of wanted it, I had in my head that I wanted it to be electrically operated. And I know that cars on boots have got what's called a linear motor in them. So I did some testing. I bought a linear motor, put it on the bench um, and then sort of see if it'd lift the weight and how much weight it'd lift. But I'll come to that later. Then I went on to the cupboards now. So this is for the kitchen. I built them in single units. I built the boxes first, routed in, and then um, glued and nailed the shelving in, if you like. So that's actually what you can see closest on the screen is, is the top. Um, and then you've got the bottom there of the cabinet um, furthest away. So yeah, um, started making a few of these up and then I sort of bolted them in. Um, once I'd actually sized them up and I'd made the cabinets, went on to tile in the rear of the kitchen. I did these with aluminium tiles and I turned them with an effect that looked like a brush aluminium effect to them. So when you turn them, it gives this checker look to it, which I really like. Um, how it will be cleaning it, I'm not quite sure. They look amazing, but whether it's any good when you try and clean it and you get lots of oil splattered in it, I don't know. As of yet, I ain't done that. This is the first of the cabinets of the kitchen. You can see the wheel arch below. Uh, we've got the 12 volts coming out for the cooker and the fridge. This is actually the fridge section, if you like. The fridge is gonna sit at the top there and then there's a cupboard below it. So yeah, the Dometic um, is going in there. They're really good fridges, the 12 volt fridges. And actually since then, I've, I've actually had uh, the fridge going for four days, used all the electrics out. I didn't have to start the van once or be on solar, which was pretty cool. Once I'd made the units up, you can see the second one next to where the fridge is, going from the back of the van. That's where the cooker sits. That's a, a Thetford cooker. Really nice, really nice cooker, three hob. Um, and as underneath is the drawer for the pans. Then you've got um, a set of three drawers. Then the next one would be the sink with like the water compartment underneath. Got them all in, clamped them all up, glued and screwed them together, fixed them into the van, locked them in, put some panels on the bottom of the van and then boom, basically it's ready, ready, waiting for the um, overhead locker um, worktop uh, to be fitted, you know, the worktop to be fitted in there. Which um, is going to look really good. It's uh, I'm obviously again I'm going for the wood look, so it's going to be a wood top in there. And looking from this end, you can see that nearest to the door, we've had to come further out from the door. That's just to get a good length of kitchen, and we don't really need all that width of doorway. You can actually afford to block some of it up. Um, so to get a decent length, and what I also am going to do on there is put a. We well, haven't done it yet. Obviously, when the worktop goes on, there's also another section which is on a hinge, so it makes it even longer. So it closes the door. You can still get in and out of the van, but that's what I was going to do eventually on there. The underneath compartment on that first compartment, you can see there. So lowest down, I've uh, I've actually just moved it there, but you can see where there's a little coil of wire on the floor um, there. Now the reason why there's power going down to that is. In there, accessed through the side door, is another little door on the outside. And that's so you can access fresh water because I don't really like drinking out of the water tank on the bottom of the van, that's underneath the van. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
have it so there's like a water pump in there, a 12 volt water pump, and it was gonna sit below where the sink is, as you can see there, so we just have the pump, so the pipe is gonna come up through the bottom of that first shelf, up through um, into the worktop, so beside the normal sink, have like a little spout on a 12 volt, so you press the button, and that will spit out water, um, this fresh out of a bottle, which I think is so much better. Uh, you can house underneath there four bottles, and also the drain for the sink is there as well, so that goes through the floor. And this process is, is actually not too bad. It's all really about working out what width you want the bathroom at, uh, the, the kitchen at, as opposed to your worktop. Now, this worktop is actually quite a deep worktop now. Because I've kept the van set back a bit, when you're in the van, it's actually a, a deep worktop. It's 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 really good. Um, you know, it gives you really good access. It's a lot bigger than what you'd think when you're in there. And then I couldn't actually do the bathroom up until that point. I wanted to make sure I got the cabinets and that in before I started to mess around and put the final bathroom side on. So obviously this is the cutout for the door. Uh, and this is, uh, funny enough, I've kept this door quite small. And some people have gone, oh, that's funny, because you've kept it quite small and you kind of have to duck to get in it. But you know, it's kind of, I kind of like the idea of having it a fairly smallish door on the side. It's still big, but yeah, see, look, it's a decent size. Um, but I think any bigger, you're just taking a bit of rigidity away from the actual frame itself. So got that on, lined it all up, trimmed it as I needed, slipped it in, it's gone in brilliantly, like really nice joins. Um, then I screwed and glued that in, screwed and glued that in as well. So that looks good. You can see the line down the side from where the bed is. That's just perfect. And then put that rubber trim around the outside. There's our workshop cat. This is a stray cat who's got into the toilet recess on the camper. This is where the, um, oh, what do they call it? It's like the, um, ah. Oh lost my words now, uh, it's the bit for the toilet, the cartridge if you like, the cartridge for the toilet, so that's, uh, he decided to come and have a look and when I pulled the cartridge out. This is a guy called Tim, he does a lot of hardwood furniture and stuff and he works up on the Houghton Estate, he's got a workshop around the back from us. I talked to him about getting some oak for the bathroom and for around the side of the flooring and some other little piece I needed like around the back of where the workshop is and he said you need to go and buy a proper big long length of oak and I can cut them to the pieces and, and plane it and all that kind of stuff to, to what you need so um, luckily he's got a beautiful big bench and loads of tools so we went in there and, and finished that off. This is Andy now finishing some of the electrics. Now this is in a picture from quite early on, actually. Um, and yeah, it's um, just really a show of, of the 240 and how the 12 volt sort of goes together and just sort of how it's um, bolted sort of like, you know, top and bottom on that one. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's, um, it, I don't know why I put that one in there quite late, to be honest with you, but that's really what the electrics looks like now. Um, bar actually on the labeling for the 12 volt, you got the 12 volt on the right. And then you've got here um, for the overhead locker in the living. Uh, as you can see there, you've got water on the left. That's your water tank underneath. Then you've got your solar controller. Then you've got your Truma controller. And then we've got four switches there with uh, some USBs and a 12 volt and then a volt gauge in the middle. The switches are kind of front locker switch. Then you've got a... Um, yeah, you've got a front locker switch, uh, and then you've got a, like a, um, a fridge switch, you've got a water switch, we've got a fan switch. So they're all on, all on switch, and then you've got a master to turn all the 12 volts off. And that's a little picture there of the, the back of the Truma, so I just cut that out. And inside there, there's actually quite a lot of cables going through all that bit, because that's where your panel is. So once I'd married the panel up, it was a case of getting all the cables through, get them all plugged in onto the back of all those units and start actually firing up some of the electrics because we hadn't really had any of the 12 volt going. So this is the one of the, we, we had to wire it to make sure the switch was working on the panel. We just stuck a little test light, a little LED test light onto the 12 volt wires that we had ready in the front locker just to make sure they were going to go up. And this is before 
I'd put the original lights in. So again, we just went around and tested to make sure that all the 12 volts were working and they were all working off of those off of those switches. Um, because, you know, until you actually get it all going, you're, you're never actually sure whether, you know, whether it's all going to work or not. The um, back of the Truma is just, well, we had numerous problems with this. We read the manuals, we tried to work out how the initial startup should be and what buttons you got to push and then we had some green lights coming on on the back of this and then we wondered whether it was wired the right way around it was i've got to say not the easiest thing i thought it was literally plug and play but it wasn't quite the easiest and then these cables then run up and they run up the side of the van up into this top um like i say where the, where your controller is and also um what i've got there i haven't put it in yet but there's also a temperature uh, room temperature just sitting underneath that truma as well so it's like the um you know for um, climate control on the truma but yeah it's uh, again looking really good and when you get to this stage the van pretty much is done it's just finishing touches and you just gotta try and push yourself over the line really this is going back to after I'd done all that, you can see in the, if you look through it, you can see most of the other stuff is built, the bathroom's on and the kitchen's in tiled and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you're now looking at me thinking, right, how can I actually make this work? Because either that or I'm going to have a big hole in the back of my van <laughs> where I anticipated a door being. So uh, different ways of getting out of trouble if, if that was the case. But I started by putting it up, you know, seeing if the hinge would work, pull a bit of string, and <laughs> seeing whether I pulled the string, whether it's through different eyelets, whether it would actually work, and how much tension you need to actually get something to lift up, and how it work. And this was a bit of, bit of physics, <laughs> a bit of uh, a bit of math to see whether it'd work. And I'm no good at maths, but um, yeah, it kind of looked to me like it was gonna work. Um, and no one else was convinced and thought I was like, over engineering it a little bit because there are two brackets at the top of the um, back where the doors lock into the rear doors when they close they lock into these um, like D brackets if you like um, so I thought I'd have to cut some out of my uh, cabinet to, uh, out of the uh, doorway I thought I was going to have to cut some out to make that fit but um luckily that wasn't the case in the end so i then mount i've decided it was definitely going to happen so i got the linear motor mounted determined i was going to do it now the reason why i've had to do it this way around is because of where those two brackets are at the top there the door lock as you can see the motor wouldn't go the other way around because it wouldn't allow the door to come up high enough uh, to live clearance so the door wouldn't ever open up high enough it, you wouldn't it would be an angle which would be rubbish so I had to actually mount it with the smaller part up into the uh, roofing but if you remember where it's actually screwed to is um, basically maybe um, five inches of glued screwed ply um, and that's going up into it with some really big screws so there's no way that's coming out of there that's um that's a, that's a proper mounting job in there because it's got to take a bit of weight and then i actually did get it fitted and it's not a picture of it there but what i did do is i know there's quite a weight hanging on the linear actuator and on that on that where it's fitted so um when it's up i got these brackets that basically mount to the doors and actually it's quite a good effect because what it does mean is if it's windy you have the back up but the door, the flap can't go up too high um, and the door, you know, the door can't go up and over and break. And also the doors can't fling back and break the back of the van. And that is pretty much the first cutout of that panel that you see there. Um, the pictures are kind of the wrong way around a little bit on that. Like ideally they should they should have been the other way around because this is not one of the first things I did before I even put the motor up, look, as you can see on there. Um so um but yeah, that's basically what I did. And I went on the inside of the van and just drew round it. Um, drew around the actual um uh, markings in there, and then once I'd drawn round it, uh, gave myself a you know, about, I think it was about two inches or something, all the way around, made it all the way around, cut it out, and then once I'd cut it out. I carpeted it, put some scrim foam on it, 
um, put a big fat rubber trim on it that I haven't, you can't see on that picture, but I've got a big heavy duty rubber trim that goes around that now, the same as what's on that first inside bit. And yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Uh, that's what it looks like. Then moved back into the van and had to finish the flooring off and how we was gonna finish it off from the living to the cockpit. So with my oak, got my oak, cut it out. Um, got some other panels on there with any excess furniture board that I had and sort of like got that squared up. Um, and yeah, just, you know, it's quite a thick floor this. Um, so yeah, got those bits in. That rubber trim I use quite a lot throughout the van. I think it looks quite neat. Made some bits for that. Um, one of the main things about doing it with the furniture board that's lined like that is A, matching it up, and B, not forgetting to make sure the stripes always go the same way. <laughs> it's really easy to hold a board up and before you know it, you might have screwed it in. So it's always important to make sure your stripes, if you go for a stripey, to make sure you don't mess up and put them in the wrong way. Um, and yeah, we just then, it was kind of a case of, right, let's um, get the van batteries and that charged up properly because we're not far away now. You can see in one of the uh, previous pictures that I had actually already... Um, bought the mattress that's a specially custom made mattress that you can get off the internet and there it looks that's your sofa at this stage the cushions were being ordered uh, again custom made that's a 240 volt socket at the front and that front vent you can see there is the vent from the Truma now what I will say that I've done with this van is that that's got a flap on the front of that little vent and the tube is very very short and someone flipped the vent round and it actually melted the little flap so word of warning i make sure your flap is open <laughs> i then had a guy come out and fit the gas and he didn't do the tidiest of jobs is it fair to say that but on hindsight, he also didn't charge me much either. So it's a nice job. It's probably not quite as tidy as what I would have liked. That particular bit had to be like that, by the way. That weren't him doing it in a bad way. Um, This picture there is like a lay gun lead, but it's not a lay gun lead. It's a, a lay gun leg. It's, it's like one of those ch cheaper brands, but this weren't that much cheaper. But I like it and it works really well. I've got it in the van now and it, it does work really well. So I quite like them. Um, and also what you notice there is, that's a single seat. Heated single seat, nonetheless. Managed to find one. Again, this is just LEDs that I was putting in for the step, decided that it needed one. It's quite bright, actually, this light. So, yeah, and in hindsight, again, I should have just tilted it downwards a little bit, so a little bit, a bit more down, lit downwards rather than the step. But, again, works quite well, works fine. And at night time, actually, it gives a good spread of light outside the van, which is good. And that's the leg and lead fitted. That's the tabletop put on with a, a piece of um, furniture board that I had left over. Just put rubber trim on the outside that and route with that. You can see the... the um, kitchen worktop there that's on the hinge so that's my extra bit that goes around you can see the bathroom door is on there now and that is pretty much the finished article bar the cushions being on the sofa and it's quite a nice finish then it was this game going back to here tv was fitting in here i ordered a tv and then i was convinced that it wasn't going to fit with the mounting frame that I've got now but I will say it does fit and it looks good in there and it's a smart tv so it's all done through my phone really I've got sky go so I can watch it on sky go put the 240 switch in and then above that we just had I had uh, a lit up usb port what's the twin usb port just so if I want to 
you know, plug any phones in or anything like that. But this would all be hidden behind the TV at a later date anyway. So you wouldn't ever see any of this. But it still looks quite neat. I went for this, like, silver, dark uh, metal switches. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why that picture's back in there. Because that don't really need to be in there, does it? That's just another picture of Andy holding the cables out. Oh, I don't really know what that's showing. Maybe that's showing the fact that we had to put it in a different port because that's why it wasn't working. So I'm sure it wasn't working when it was in the top one. And I think we swapped it around. Is that what happened? I'm not sure what happened there anyway. This is the side door that I said I was going to do at a much later date. And this was one of the last things that I was thinking about doing. And again, I just took the original uh, board that was on there. Um, it was in really good condition. So all I did is put the scrim phone on it, which is like that padded foam. And then covered it in the Bentley stitch and glued it all on. And I think that looks neat and tidy. You just got to make sure that you keep it neat. And look at them, don't they look nice? Uh, they're the two cushions. They come in a lovely little bow called Plush Interiors. This is the company that did these. And they're really nice. I weren't sure that's the biggest thing about being a bloke. You don't actually know good, you're very good with colour schemes, but I've kind of gone for sort of a greys all the way through. But when it comes to the sofa, I want to line it up somehow. So I was like, let's get some, you know, let's get a bit of uh, the tartan on there. So I came up with an idea. The lovely people at Plush Interior says, yeah, we can do that. Um, and literally within a week or so, these were back. They didn't even have them very long and quite a good price, let me tell you. So if you're into uh, wanting to get some sofa cushions and that made, I think this worked out all made and all done. I think they worked out about £100 each or something. This is now a picture of inside the bathroom. I still need some odd bits doing, but generally that's what it looks like. You've got your shower there. That's cupboard, if you think that is what that is there. That's pretty much housing the um, wheel arch. But there is a cupboard in there for like toilet rolls and, and toiletries and stuff. Those tiles I did, they are tiles. I tiled it properly. It's all tiled um, and it looks nice. Then I got the worktop in. This was a bit of a task because I wanted it to fit really nice and tight. And to get it right just takes a bit of time. You've, you've just got to take a bit of time with it. Fridge is in. I'm a Dometic uh, CRX, I think they are CRX 50 or something. That's now in. And the tiles and the worktop just work really well together. I think it looks really neat and tidy if I do so so myself. Then once the worktop was in, I routed and put an edge on it. Um, got the sink in, got the cooker in, made sure it's all going to sit properly and I'm going to be able to screw it in correctly. Uh, also, what you'll notice, with the fronts of the cupboards there, I painted like a two-inch ridge all the way around. It just makes it look a bit more like a cabinet rather than, you know, some boxes that have been banged together. So I think that looks quite neat. And it's much better when you open the drawers and stuff if you can when you see them. Fridge, uh, the sorry, the uh, cooker was a bit of a pain to get in because with the gas pipes being what they've got to be, to how I designed it and getting access to it to the back of the cooker was a bit of a pain. So the guy, the gas guy, said you're gonna have to try and cut a bit out. So unfortunately, underneath around the back of the cabinets, you can't. So I had to cut a bit out so he's big enough for him to get his arm through. It was pretty tight. So once I definitely got. All the right sizes, it was all cut out correctly. The, you know, it looked pucker, it was there. Uh, it's then a case of putting the wax on. Wax on, wax off. Well, you don't really wax off. What you do is you put three coats on, but you have to leave it. So I was actually leaving it 24 hours in between coats. And what it does is, once you've coated it, what I will tell you is, is it picks the surface up. So it makes it rough. So you could have smoothed this down to you know, like a baby's bum. It could have been proper smooth. However, when you put this stuff on, it 
uh, picks picks the grain up a little bit. So what I then did is I once it was all totally dry and it had been on there a little while, I then got some wire wool and some more of it, and then I kind of polished it up with wire wool. And what that does that takes all the roughness out of it. I started with this chopping board. This is actually a cut out for the sink, but it makes a really good chopping board. So I um did this first to make sure before we did the worktop that it was going to work all right. And you, it takes a bit of elbow grease. It's quite hard work, to be honest. But if you work it and work it and work it and just using the tiniest amount, a little bit of wire wool, and it actually shines the surface up quite nice. It also takes water quite well. I've spilt some drinks on this, and it's actually, as long as you mop it up fairly quick, it's not too bad. But it's more like a wax than, than anything else. Would I have gone for a wood worktop again? Probably, I like it. I don't. I'm not. I don't use kitchens that much. I think probably if you was cooking a lot, um, if it was lots of water going on your worktop, I think you'd probably be regretting the fact that it's wooden. But I don't. If I spill anything on it, I get it off reasonably quickly anyway. I don't just sort of leave stuff like you know making a mess all over the worktop. So you you have to take care of them. Is probably what I'm what I'm saying. And you can see there, that's the, obviously the tap with an extender that comes out and there's two different modes there for the, for the, for the, the flow you can have. And the little silver one with the little push button on it, that's for my fresh water. Looking back from the bedroom to the front of the van, everything's in now. The, yeah, it's pretty much in. That's pretty much what my camper now looks like there's a couple of other bits like i don't think on that one the door handle if you like or the, the door open system mechanism isn't on the bathroom door but yeah it looks pretty much like it looks now um so that's what it looks like looking forward i think the worktops do look good though I did get a Union Jack to put on the front of my domestic fridge. I think that I think that's just gone again. I think it's just gone in quite well, but that worked up now. It just looks lovely, and all that's actually left to do is put the fronts on for the drawers, and make the drawers up, and get the runners in and and such likes. So with the bed. I had it made by a company called Custom Made Beds. Highly recommend them. It's a memory foam mattress, four foot by six foot. I'm five foot ten. It's okay for me. I don't mind. I do generally find myself sitting, uh, sleeping a bit crossways across the bed, but um, but overall, it's uh, it's it's not a bad size bed at all, and it is is proper comfy. And then once I'd um, sort of got it ready to go. I had to let the tyres down and get it out of the workshop. <laughs> Once I put the vents on the top, I just wasn't ever going to get it out. So I had to literally let the tyres down and get five people from uh, the industrial estate to um, stand in it just to bring it down, just try and get it out. And even then, it was so close. It was literally millimetres to get it out. But I did get it out, and it's just amazing how much dust is created from all the building, all the cutting of the wood, it's amazing. But I'm still so glad I was actually able to do this inside. I, I could imagine if you were doing a build like this on your driveway, it'd be a nightmare because all weathers, I was able to have the doors open and, you know, sort of work on it in and out, in and out. Because you do find yourself in and out, in and out of the van quite a lot. So having to open and shut the door, open and shut the door, just slow the process down. So if you can do it indoors, I do I do obviously recommend that. Um, it goes without saying, really. Um, and then once the tyres are pumped up, I've got it back round to the uh, hose pipe just to see what the paint was like after things had been lent up against it and, and all that, and it had been in the workshop. So, yeah, gave it a wash. Andy helping. It's going to be one. So, it's how dirty it's been in there for nearly a year. Amazing. But there she is. Ready to go. Nearly. <laughs> Soon rock and rolling. Let's give it a wash, eh? 
And there it is, all washed in its finished form, bar the uh, off-road tyres, the A-bar and the Ford Raptor grille that is on it now. And that looks really good with those on there. So I'll do a walk around video of this um, van and I'll go through all the different bits of it like in its finished, completely finished state and put all one video together. I'll do a video on it. And if you want to know anything about the build um, in more detail, just PM me and I'll see how helpful I can be. But if you're interested in any other of my videos, I'm actually doing a circumnavigation of the UK this year in July on my RNLI lifeboat. And if you head over to my channel, you'll see on there some other videos with regards to getting the boat and prepping it up ready for this 2000 mile journey in July that this van is going to be used for. So please uh, like, subscribe and share. Uh, it really does help this channel progress and get the um, UK circumnavigation attempt out to people. So great. See you soon. And again, thanks for watching.